Oh, 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 oh. Let's get the framing right. Let's get the framing right. Is that good? Maybe a little bit down. There we go. That's good. No, I need more headroom. I need more headroom. Excuse me, folks. This is how professional we are today. This close to Halloween. Now, I thought we'd talk about get Elsa on the screen. Because I know a lot of you have been asking about her. And I haven't really been giving you a lot of updates with this little creature. But she's certainly celebrating Halloween. Can you see what that says right there? A little pumpkin head. It's a little shout out to Liz from Witch City Wix. But she's happy. She's getting bigger. She can't see. I don't know what to do. I don't want to trim her bangs. And she's got the dark circles under her eyes like I do. So if, you ha if we have any dog people out there, any dog folks who know how to take care of that, those dark eyes, and speaking of dark eyes, anybody know how to take care of like human dark eyes? Uh, let me know because, yeah, I, 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 clean, I clean, I scrub her eyes. She's a very happy dog. And I'm not all about this vanity stuff, but uh, I don't know. I've never dealt with these uh, dark eye situations before. So happy, happy Halloween, everybody. Hope everyone is enjoying the very festive season. Still trying to get that camera just right. How about we do this? Ha <coughs> ha. There we go. And the first step is always getting you folks up here. So I can read your comments. Dun, 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 dun. Update the page. And I silenced the wind chime today because uh, last week I realized a little bit too late how much of a problem that wind chime really became. It was really annoying. All right. October 29th. This is the Sunday before Halloween. Has everyone, does everyone have their costumes picked out? Is everyone all set? Did everyone buy their Halloween candy? Is all the decorations put up? All the twinkle lights, the fog machine, did you get your fog juice? New Hampshire, yeah, it's rainy here in New York. Ford family says it's rainy in New Hampshire. Grain-free dog food cleared up my Shih Tzu George. Thank you, Cecily. Huh. Nancy's getting her coffee, and on that cue, I think I'll do the same. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Spilled some. It's okay. It's all right. Uh, okay, so Nancy needs more candy. Rainy here in Pennsylvania. I think we're going to have a very rainy Halloween in the Northeast. That's the way it's looking. My baby boy is Nemo, and I'm Dory this year, says Amy. Well, that's, that's awesome. Thumbs up for Pixar, Pixar Disney. All right, so if you guys read the headline of this video, you know, I really should have put Hall Happy Halloween first because as you can see, we're really celebrating Halloween today. Uh, but the big news, I figured we'd get that out of the way, is the whole Yankee Candle Christmas 2017. The catalog is out. It came out earlier than I was informed, which is good. It's fun. Uh, but I would have put my videos out a little sooner if I had known that. Um, but also... You know, the looks are different. I did, I, you know, I, I was so wrapped up with the collections, the Winter Wonderland collection coming back. I was so wrapped up with the cookie swap collection coming back that I even I didn't even really give myself to, to a chance to think about, well, what would they look like with the new labels? So I wanted to give you guys a chance to hear what I really think about these new labels. Now, if you haven't seen my cookie swap video, yet uh i i didn't really review or i should I, 
I never review. I try not to use that word. I didn't really evaluate the two brand new scents from the Cookie Swap 2017. That's going to be Fresh Baked Apple Cake Cup and Lemon Drop Cookie. But I did get a great cold sniff off those candles, and I thought from those cold sniffs, I got a pretty good basic breakdown of what those fragrance fragrances are gonna uh, are gonna smell like in their larger formats, uh, and. Um, I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased with that. I do have hope, uh, and the hope is getting thinner and thinner, that they will show up in the house warmer jar, and it doesn't look like they will. Uh, the catalog is showing them in the small, in the small tumblers, as we probably all know. Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond is carrying them in the perfect pillars, which are a little bit, you know, the, the, the tall, skinny pillars, just in case you don't know, uh, single wick. Uh, but they don't. Ha I don't believe they're going to be carrying the new fragrances in those perfect pillars. Only the candy cane meringue, uh, the ice gingerbread, and uh, the ice gingerbread and the sprinkled sugar cookie. And a lot of people. Are you one of these people who are a little upset that crunchy pistachio vanilla is not coming back? I don't know, folks. I don't know. I think it's to say that that candle is not coming back, that that fragrance is not coming back, I think is jumping the gun. Give it a little bit more time. I would not at all be surprised if we see that as an online exclusive sometime soon, maybe next year, but maybe even this year, or uh, sold in a completely different venue uh, or uh, look, style, vessel, format. Um, from my experience and probably from yours, if you go to the Yankee Candle outlets, those crunchy pistachio vanilla candles are everywhere. My prediction was that it was going to sell out last year, and it obviously didn't because they are everywhere in the outlets. They're, it's really an easy one to find. So that tells me that there was something maybe not jiving, something not working with that fragrance that they had to take it off the roster for this year. But because of the demand, I'm sure uh, they will, I'm not sure, but I think they will bring it back. Now, so the cookie swap, uh, yeah, if we don't see the magic cookie bar, which was probably the most complex and the most interesting, in my opinion, and the crunchy pistachio vanilla, I understand everyone's love with that one. Uh, it will be a shame. But something that I haven't really had a chance to talk about yet is, and again, I just want to get this really addressed right off the bat, just in case we have any new uh, folks joining us today, and they, they've never seen the Candle Enthusiast, you know, the main title of this, this live chat is the Christmas stuff. So let's talk about this, and then we'll start talking about Halloween. The Winter Wonderland Collection. So originally debuted in 2014 has it been no, that many years already 2014 and just to give you an idea just in case we don't know uh, there's that full size label snow is glistening I know that's not a great way to view it poor lighting poor focus um, but they did the, 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 the jars had these wonderful snowflakes that uh, Look, they appear. They're, they are not. They are not decals. These do not peel off. They look like they are screen printed on the jars, and there's just so much photography. And then last year, let me show this one more because this one I don't think, unless it comes as an online exclusive, I do not think we're seeing again. And there was a time when this was on eBay. I believe it was going for upwards of hundred and fifty dollars after the Christmas season in 2014, and then it made its return the following year. Um, uh, so, last year we had the updated, more narrow labels, which significantly cut down the majestic f photography of these candles. And I think you all should know, if you know me, how I feel about that. Photographs, context behind the candles, uh, to me is very important. I, I realize if we had to divide candle lovers into two, <coughs> scent, scent, scented candle lovers, into two different categories, there would be folks who burn candles for decoration, for the centerpiece, 
to decorate their house, and of course, for that beautiful, beautiful smell, to deodorize their house, or to welcome guests, or to calm themselves down at the end of the day. But then the other side of the coin, the other on the other line of the sand, is it, are people like me. Uh, to me, candles, and I repeat myself all the time, they're all about storytelling. Storytelling. How much information can you give us so that we can smell these candles and set our imagination uh, a go, set it, set it on flame, set it, any pun you want to make. And the smaller and smaller the labels get, the less context we have behind the, the candles. Now, this year, if you have your candle, catalog in front of you, I'll give you a quick look. It's uh, kind of hard to see, but that's, that's kind of the gist this year of the new label. If you can't tell what that is, that's the Winter uh, uh, Wonderland candle and it's a macro close-up photograph of frosted pine twigs, some kind of Christmas tree twigs outside with snow and ice. And although the, the, the photograph is larger, and I'm happy about that, uh, I do miss the story. Uh, when I look at this, and I, I really, I usually try to keep my opinions out of my evaluations. Uh, to me, my opinion doesn't really do you guys any good because I might love patchouli, at, and I do, and some of you folks I know hate patchouli, so why would I bash patchouli? Because, you know, it's, it's, all, about, it's all about opinions. But I am going to share my opinion on uh, these Winter Wonderland candles. Uh, I think it's a step up from what we saw last year, but... My fear is that Yankee Candle is trying to do away with the storytelling. They're trying to get away from showing us a picture to putting us, trying to manipulate us, put us in the right state of mind. And uh, these candles to me are functional in the sense that they are wonderful decorative pieces. They're pretty, but I want a story. Does anybody else feel that? Does anybody else feel that? Uh, and I'm happy that we see the house warmer jars this year, but I don't, I don't know what's going on with Yankee Candle and all the different labels. The returning favorites are different. The outlet labels are different. The holiday candles are coming out in different labels. What is the future of the Yankee Candle label? This is nothing to be negative about. I'm certainly not negative. Uh, it's really just something to talk about constructively and to share, uh, share our opinions, and to make sure that Yankee Candle can hear the customer's opinion. Because as much as they say that they do, I don't believe they do. And if they, and if they are getting customer's opinions, I don't think it's from YouTube. And that scares me. That scares me, because a lot of people that I've talked to who are associated with Yankee Candle, whether it be corporate, whether it be uh, retail, whether it be the village, they're unfamiliar with the community at large on YouTube uh, when it comes to Yankee Candle. And um, I think that's, I really want to see that change. I really, I really do. So I think it's important that we share our opinions and it's something I haven't really done a lot. I think I'm going to be doing this a little bit more. But like I said, in a positive, constructive way so that Yankee Candle knows that we're not bashing them. We're just giving our feedback. Now let's hear from you guys. What do you feel? And don't, don't agree with me. What do you guys think of the new cookie swap collection? The candles, the fragrances that are gone, the ones that are back, the labels, the, the formats, the sizes, so on and so forth. While you're doing that, I'm going to start looking at some of these um, um, comments that you guys have been writing. Pistachio was the best of the collection, says Angie Clementine, and it was the first to sell out uh, at my local store. Uh, that was that's a very good point, um, and she's not she 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 puts in, in uh, uh, parentheses that she's not talking about the outlet at South Deerfield. 
South Deerfield, the flagship store, that was this, the same case. It sold out in the, about, it sold out in the first day and a half. Um, they've, of course, replenished, but it did sell out very quick. Nancy missed out on the cookie swap candles last year. She only has the melt cups. The good news is about that is, I mean, things may have changed a little bit now because we're, we're getting further and further away from the original release date, but you can find them at outlets. I still find them all over the place, all over the place. But my, my suggestion to you is if you do find, I don't have any of the cookie swap candles here in front of me. Uh, if you're shopping at an outlet, and this is gonna be a part of my how to shop at an outlet video, which I promise I will be doing soon. Make sure you check two things when you're buying, um, this goes for any candle at the outlet, that maybe there's something wrong with the label. Because if there's something wrong with the label, like it's not placed right, that could be the reason why it's at an outlet. And what that's telling you is there's nothing wrong with the fragrance. You see what I mean? Uh, same thing with the bottom. If the, the bottom sticker, now they put the outlet stickers on there, but sometimes if you can catch, like put, I put my cell phone flashlight up to it, and you could read what the candle is. Sometimes they put the wrong sticker on the bottom, a label, and that's the only reason why it's in the outlet. So you wanna find candles in the outlet are, that are there, not because they're first pours or there's something wrong with the formulation, there's something wrong with the color inside. And um, the other thing is, make sure you're checking the, the actual lid. Smell the candle, smell the lid. Because people in outlets, shoppers, customers, you gotta stop doing this if you're one of these people. But they're smelling candles and they they mismatch the 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 jar tops, right? So you smell a candle and you're like, wow, that doesn't smell good at all. But really, you're not smelling Sleigh Bell's ring, you're smelling Magic Cookie Bar. And it's a combination now of the two fragrances. So those are two two tips. Um, that it will be a part of how to shop at the outlet because I've just experienced a lot of this over the past couple of months. I bought a lot of candles that did not have the right lids. Uh, I'm always looking for very pretty labels and there's always something a little bit off about the aroma but the ones that have ugly labels smell pretty good. All right, I got really got to catch up with you guys. Cecily Erker. Hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Cecily says photographs are are and labels are fully eighty are, are fully eighty percent of the enjoyment factor for me of a scented candle. And uh, yeah, so I, I mean I I'm inclined to agree with Cecily. Now I know there's other people. I think if we could look at fans of Bed Bath & Beyond, scratch that, Bath & Body Works, that's not me being condescending, I swear, I just do that all the time. Bath & Body Works, they really don't put a lot, they do have candles with photographs on them, but really they're just pretty labels with the names and very literal names. So I think that's a major difference between Bath & Body Works and Yankee Candle. Yankee Candle's about the story Bath and Body Works is more about the luxury, the smell, the the, the authenticity, the the, the, the the prettiness of the vessel itself. Welcome, World of Wax. Dream by the Fire is available at Bed Bath and Beyond. Thank you, Jackie. That's good to know because that that is certainly a great one to have any time of the year. Uh, Nicole, I think it's safe to say she does not like the labels. And I'm pronouncing Cecily's name right. <laughs> Angie says she hates when they swap out the lids. I know, it's it's something that's so easily done, and yet I never even thought about it. And so I kind of figured out, I had a European jar lid on a U.S. jar, and I realized, oh... Uh, that's why uh, my Christmas cookie smells like spearmint. Any thoughts on the centerpieces? I'm gonna open that up to you guys. Uh, Ford family ask any thoughts on the centerpieces because I'm purely a candle 
uh, person. Uh, I, I, I'm all about the wax and uh, the wicks and the flame. And so I, I have never really gotten into the centerpieces or the melt cups for that matter. The only time I'll get a melt cup is if I'm really trying to evaluate the smell of a candle in different formats. Will washing out the lid fix it? It's an excellent, excellent question. Meaning, like, if you, if I took this, oh boy, if I took this dream by the fire, and let's say I put this into a pot of really warm water, and I really scrubbed it clean, at first you might think that you've gotten rid of the aroma, but give it about a day, it comes back, and the reason why I know this is because my aroma prison stuff. Whenever you see me melt down wax into a mason jar, that mason jar, I used to clean them out and reuse them. I throw them away now, or I recycle them, because I can't, um, sometimes the scent is so strong that you can't even wash it off the glass. Okay, so this is a gift from Lisa, one of our candle enthusiasts, uh, subscribers, Frankenberry. Frankenberry, we all know Frankenberry, right? I was gonna have a, an epic, an epic. When I say epic, I mean like I got the family size boxes of the Count Chocula, Blueberry, and um, Frankenberry cereals. Uh, but then I realized they all taste the same. <laughs> They're all the same ingredients. One tastes like a little bit like blueberry, like candy blueberry. One tastes a little bit like candy strawberry. And one tastes a little bit like chocolate. So to, to taste them side by side would certainly be fun and be a treat. Uh, but really, unless I, 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 I don't know, unless I could come up with some crazy other experiment, like, like making them into desserts, like granola bars, or maybe I was thinking about making them into like popcorn balls. Um, and like using like a, a nice hard uh, colored caramel outer shell to hold it all together uh, but kind of put that on the back burner the cereals the cereals uh, or are, are corn based so they're like sprout sprouted corn is it the right way to say it uh, and but very sweet very sweet we'll have little marshmallows like lucky charms And yes, they do have uh, a lot of uh, uh, the, the artificial flavors and 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 the, the colorings in there as well. Uh, but I love I love the shirt. This is super nostalgic because this this even like predates me um, as far as when I was a kid. This is more, I think this is more in like late 70s look for the Frankenberry. Late 70s, early 80s, correct me if I'm wrong. Do you guys remember the Dunkin' Donuts commercials? The Dunkin' Donuts guy? And they would have, you know, like the scenes in the graveyard and uh, all the fancy donuts that are all decorated beautifully and then you go into Dunkin' Donuts and they don't really look all that pretty. But... Uh, also, the, the McDonald's commercials, where you get the Happy Meals in the buckets, the glow-in-the-dark buckets. Uh, I know Nicole knows what I'm talking about. Lisa, see, there she is. Lisa, I'm wearing the Frankenberry today. I was going to wear my Freddy Krueger sweater, but it's far too muggy to wear that today, so I went with the Frankenberry. Stranger's Thing Season 2. Oh, did it really? I say I only saw the trailer really quickly. That's interesting. Um, sh Eric says Shane always with the Dunkin' Donut hate. I don't hate Dunkin' Donuts. I, 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 you know, Dunkin' Donuts is nostalgia. It's nostalgia. It's just, you know, I don't know. When it comes to coffee, you know. Um, so, are we done talking about the Winter Wonderland collection? I, I, you know, I kind of ad-libbed what I was saying. I hope I didn't come off negative, uh, because 
Uh, you, know, you guys know how I always try to focus on the positive, and that's really what it is. Constructive, positive feedback. If I was here saying, I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him, I'd be lying. There's a difference between being uh, objective and lying. And uh, I just think that, uh, you know, it's, I, I, don't, I, I don't understand the direction. I don't understand the direction. Because what will they look like next year? Wh why would they bring them back if they're so simplistic looking? So I would love to hear, Yankee Candle, if you're listening, I would love to hear, I think all of us would love to hear from you. A nice little panel of Yankee Candle uh, uh, um, representatives just talking about how these choices are made, where they come from. Let's hear from you. Talk to the fans. All right, so what else do we have going on here? D -d 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 I have a few things. I have a few things going on. You know, it's a kind of a, a slow smell at Sunday, but I have a lot of stuff to show, which is good news. One thing I want to do is shamelessly promote a couple of my videos. I posted my Sally uh, uh, potion collection video last night. It's strange. It's strange. The opening is worth watching, but if you're confused, I don't blame you. It's a strange video and it's quite long, but the, don't get me don't get me wrong, the video or the excuse me, the candles are really really fun. But someone did mention that um, for such strange names like Frog's Breath, the Nightmare Before Christmas candles is the ones I'm talking about. Frog's Breath and Deadly Nightshade, they're hoping they would be a little bit more outside the box and strange and peculiar. Um, and I get that. I get that. I'm totally on that side. But if you know Scent Pop Candle Company, the producers of that Sally's Potion collection, check them out. Check out my video. Um, they, all their candles, at least everyone I've smelled, have always been crowd pleasers. They are decadently delicious. They, uh, they, they, they're not so much, they're, they're, n they're not bold. They're, 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 they, they please the masses, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. Uh, another uh, series of videos I did was the Coventry Creations Witches Brew Collection. Nothing to do with Yankee Candle. Uh, these candles have already been auctioned off. Uh, to fans of the show, but these are the votives that I use for the Aroma Prison analysis. And I thought I'd burn one. I thought I'd burn one. I already got, I already have Happy Halloween burning right here. But I want to get this witch's purse lit. And once again, Tanya and Mark, thank you for the arc lighter. My hands are shaking, folks. I am all right. There's nothing to worry about. Wow, that wick is really covered in wax. Can you see that? I'll pull it away. There we go. These things, again, Coventry Creations, Witches Brew uh, Candle Collection. These are not Halloween candles. These are. Uh, these, they, they, uh, the, the folks from this company have been around for 25 years. They take, they take what they do very seriously. So when we're talking about outside of the box fragrances, things that you really, if you ever want to experience smells that you've never seen represented before, this is a great company to go to. And this particular candle is called Witch's Purse. Uh, they promote it as being their uh, bergamot and date scented candle but trust me there's so much so much more going on with this candle so i'm gonna have that burning off to the side i can already smell it and it is a pillar candle it is a pillar candle and yet the aromatics are in insane insane uh anything with we got Rebecca Johnson's in the house. My clothes smell like candles. Lorna, hello, hello. Nancy says, yeah, I love Witch's Purse and Witch's Brew. 
the original sense. Fantastic. So while that's burning, I'm going to show you what I have right here. Now, you guys, if you've been watching my live uh, Sunday shows, you should know what this is. These are these little chairs that I found at like an overstock store. They're totally not meant for candles. But as soon as I saw them, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, this is this is perfect because I I like living in cold. I, I always have the AC on or the central air on. I always have fans on. Right now there's a fan above me. Presents a lot of problems when you're burning candles. It really, really does. And so I wanted to put this to the test. The full front of the candle is exposed to the elements, but the rest of the candle is going to be almost like a cozy, like a beer can cozy. It's gonna be warming that glass. So I wanna see how well this candle pools out by the time we get to the end of this video. And if anyone think, is thinking that might be dangerous, I, I, you know, I understand your concern, but I just, I can't, I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine anything happening. Maybe in a medium sized jar. I do have an Illumilid on it. The sound of the rain. Yeah, it's uh, really starting to pick up now. Today I was supposed to be filming after our live chat here, maybe even before, but that got canceled because of the rain. But I can't complain, this season's been really good. The summer was lousy with the rain. But the autumn has been very kind. Forbidden Macintosh. Swirl candle, that'd be great. Yes, if you do have a cat, this is probably not the way to go. So my all-time favorite candles, that's a big conversation. Um, you know, there's a lot of candles that are near and dear to my heart because of nostalgic reasons. There's one right here. This is Happy Halloween, the now retired uh, candle. I mean, I don't want to call it retired because it technically was a treasure for many years. But I'm hoping to see that come back. Witch's Brew, you guys know how much I love Witch's Brew when it comes to Yankee Candle. I just love aroma in general. And seldomly, unless it's tradition, do I ever really burn the same candle more than just a couple times. Because there's just so many candles out there. No, no, don't, don't ever stop asking. Don't ever stop asking. It's just hard because um, to say I, don't, I just don't have favorites. And that goes for movies, music, everything. Uh, da, 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 da. Also want to give some shout outs, actually one shout out. I've already done the Scent Pop Candle Company. And remember, these were not sponsored videos. Um, uh, the, the folks from these candle companies uh, or are, and I'm almost bashful to say this, fans of the Candle Enthusiast Show, they like what I do, they support what I do. And I support what they do tremendously. So, um, Scent Pop has uh, always graciously sent me a slew of candles. And that's going to be the case also for Burke and Hare. I did review these candles. This is going to be uh, their Halloween collection, Midnight and Hocus Pocus. It's not posted yet. I know it's kind of late. But I did film it at the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery and it will be posted very soon. I'm not sure if they sell these after Halloween, and if you want my opinion on which one to get before Halloween is over, I don't even know if they have them in stock anymore. I, I don't know, I like them both. The Hocus Pocus was really special, and you'll know why when you see that video. So huge shout out to Burke and Hare. We're going to be working with many, many other smaller production candle companies in the near future. There's a lot of changes happening, and uh, I'm very excited about this because I'll always be reviewing Yankee Candles because we know how much I love Yankee Candle. 
But really, I think it's important that we address these smaller candle companies. Those of you who've joined me from the beginning know how much I mean that. Oh, Rebecca's too kind. Um, okay, so Lorna says, my cat is very sensitive to smells, so leaves my candles alone. Oh, well, there you go. I thought you were going to say you couldn't burn candles because of your cat. Because there's another wonderful candle company called uh, Pet House. Pet House. Look them up. I did a video uh, for them. Very, I, don't, I don't know how well they work with pets, but they're supposed, supposed to be very, very uh, pet friendly. They've been featured in many magazines, and they're doing very well for themselves. And it was one of my early videos where uh, I reviewed two of their candles, and they smelled awesome. So if you do have pets and you are concerned about the health risks, um, that is a company that not only addresses that issue, but also is very charitable to uh, protecting animals, making sure that they are safe and taken care of. How about we light more candles? Let's get more candles lit in this situation. What in God's name is this? That's a mason jar. Kind of an ongoing joke since the beginning of the candle enthusiast is I always uh, say uh, I, I uh, had an earthquake that destroyed a lot of my candles when I was living out in California. And I always say, I'll save that story for another time. Well, there really is no story. There, and there was an earthquake and I lost a lot of candles. And I fixed them, just about all of them. Took me quite a bit of time. But inside of this jar, could anyone guess what's inside of this jar? This is a Halloween fragrance. And you can see we're getting to the very, very end. Look how beautiful that looks. And you can see this was up here. This burned beautifully. So if you ever break or shatter your glass of your Yankee Candle, before you decide to rip it in pieces and throw it in like, uh, like uh, your, your wax melt or your tart, uh, your, your tart melter, tart melter, wax melt, whatever you call it, electric melt, I just don't use them. Um, consider trying to fix them first. Just don't melt them all down. That's the thing you don't want to do is melt all of the wax. Don't do that. But this is going to be, did anybody guess it? Ghostly treats. That is right. Vanilla. oh, it's a very good guess though, Jackie. Ghostly treats. Uh, always has to come out and make an appearance for Halloween. And this is my first time lighting it this year. I think the last time I lit this candle was all the way last year when I made my uh, video where I compared this candle to Campfire Treats or what's the other name? Campfire Treats, Fireside Treats is the other name. But there's more candles. And this just happens to be another broken candle. I'm not lighting only broken candles because I don't want to light my other ones. But um, I have all these brand new, so I want to make sure I burn all these first. This one is called, this was a swirl candle. Does anyone have this or have burned this? Super sweet pumpkin. Oh man, oh man. This was a swirl of pumpkin buttercream and buttercream. So there's some buttercream action happening in this candle. You better believe it. Um, so this was always my solution to folks who really wanted to amp up their candy corn uh, candle. See, there's some soot on there, and I apologize for that. Uh, but a lot of people are like, oh, my, my, candy can or my candy corn candle won't throw and fill my house. I always told them, you know what, buy super sweet pumpkin or even just a buttercream candle and burn that alongside it because this one is massively intense. We got a lot of aromas going on here. We got Witch's Purse, we got Happy Halloween, which is like a root beer float black licorice sarsaparilla. We got uh, 
ghostly treats, a nice ooey gooey marshmallow, and I always say a little bit of like dried lavender or even violet uh, floral aromas on that ghostly treats. No one ever seems to address the florals on ghostly treats, and I don't know why. And think about it, why would ghostly treats have a floral smell? If you take a look at that label, right, it looks very similar to this, the ghostly treats. Uh, what are you gonna find in an old cemetery next to all of these tombstones? You're gonna find decaying flowers, bouquets of flowers. So having that little bit of floral, little bit of that dried lavender, dried violet in the background of ghostly treats, I think is a super, super nice touch. Super nice touch. And if you look at that ghostly treats candle, it even is highlighted with some purple color. So I think they're trying to express it to us. But they never really, I don't think a lot of people uh, have ever really mentioned any florals on, on ghostly treats. And does anybody, trivia question, does anybody know the original name? And I'm not making this up. The original name of ghostly treats. The reason why it was kind of scarce the year it came out is because they had to completely change uh, the, the name and the look. Anyone knows? Huge thumbs up. Cecily just got Church and Holy Ground from Wish City Wicks. Those are two serious candles. Church is... I love it. A beautiful expression of frankincense, myrrh, not smoke not smoky at all a uh, little bit woody but not smoky that woodiness comes from the frankincense uh, so don't get it mixed up with like smoky smoky incense in the church um, if anything it's bright and, and really pretty and beautiful um, and then holy ground is my favorite candle by which city wicks um, you know if someone could really look at me and say, after smelling it, they think it smells bad. I just, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I agree with them. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. I just don't know how that would be possible because it is such a beautiful smell that you really can't find represented in many, many locations, many candle companies. And church would certainly work nice for Christmas. In fact, a lot of Witch City Wicks candles would work beautifully for Christmas. I really want to buy one, but can't remember what the brand is, the Taser Light. This is an Edison Arc, and this is all I'm familiar with. I am old school matchstick man. This was a, a very nice gift. So I've been using it since I've received it. Now, I started posting Halloween videos this year around July. I've mentioned numerous times that this was a huge surprise for me because I had the whole summer scheduled with summer content and then suddenly I realized everyone's like, more Halloween, we want more Halloween, we want more Halloween. And so, for me, I feel like I've been celebrating Halloween for three months. And, uh, you know, I'm willing, I'm happy to do that for you folks. Uh, and I'm certain, certainly still in the Halloween spirit. Uh, the thing is, I bet you you're at home and you've been celebrating Halloween for a while too. And maybe you made it all the way through your Halloween candles. Maybe you burned all of your Halloween candles. They're not gone, but you burned them all. So you want a candle that you already have that you can burn that's appropriate for Halloween, but it's not necessarily a Halloween candle. Do you get what I'm trying to say? A candle that you can burn for Halloween, but is not promoted for Halloween. This one is going to be hard to find, and I don't know why. Bring it back, Yankee. Uh, the design looks very familiar. Bed Bath & Beyond has been carrying uh, this sort of design for a long time and several different fragrances. But can you read the name there? Snow Dusted Woods. I love this fragrance. And talking about frankincense and myrrh, that is definitely going to be one of the cornerstones of this fragrance. So, appropriate for Christmas? Oh yeah. But if you burn this on Halloween, and put like put this in like a Halloween jar holder or like a hurricane. 
this is totally going to work for like a haunted, the haunted black forest. This will give you a spooky outdoor forest in the evening, nighttime, smoky, uh, smoky, 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 uh, smoky, woody, earthy, fresh earth dug from the ground. Not a lot of minerality or anything like that, but all of those wonderful autumnal aromas come to mind. If you happen to find this candle, get one. Um, just get one. I don't know how rare it is. I should have uh, purchased more, but I love the fragrance. I did review this last year, but I actually never posted the video because it looked terrible. It just, it looked terrible. I did it all the way up when I was up at Santa's Village. And it just looked sad. I was like sitting alone in like a cabin. And I'm like talking about candles by myself. It was making me depressed. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, of course there's no fragrance notes on it, but. And look at that. See that right there? This drives me nuts. Can Yankee Candle, I love you. Don't ever mistake me. It says peel here. Peel here? Why? Why would you why would you want to take Alright? Alright. Bath and Body Works has all those kinds of scents. Hey, I love Bath and Body Works fragrances. In fact, I don't think I've ever smelled one that I'm like, this is bad. If anything, they always I find are outstanding. But I can't, I can't be purchasing a lot of candles. And plus, at least I think you missed this part of the live. I was talking about the importance of the photography, where Bath and Body Works, beautiful fragrances, beautiful, luxurious vessels. Uh, I think it's safe to say the majority of their candles really don't have artwork or a photograph painting, drawing, some form of uh, mixed media. Speaking of mixed media, Laura, hello from New Jersey. I'm on my break. Hello, Laura. Nice to see you. Or nice to hear from you. Let's see, I don't remember that review. You should have posted it. Um, it was so bad, Nicole. It was so bad. Maybe I'll put it in a blooper reel at the end of the year. I'm compiling a lot of, uh, not so much bloopers, but just like outtakes of just ridiculous stuff that obviously got cut out for good reason. Here's a question. Would anybody peel off, seriously, and I mean this, this is not condescension. This is discussion. Would anybody peel, if you're going to a restaurant and you order a nice bottle of wine, a nice, say, $75 bottle of Napa Valley Cabernet, um, would you peel off the label? I'm trying to use that as a comparison. Why is that different? Or if you say you bought a case of wines, from anywhere in the world and you got them home in your collection, would you peel off the label? That's where my mind gets confused. I don't understand that, that process or that, that concept. Lisa says Bath and Body Works is evolving. Evolving is always good. Please don't ever mistake me ever mistake me as being negative on Bath and Body Works. I've attempted to do a few reviews on Bath and Body Works candles and I don't know I just felt like uh, it just was you know I, I just felt like uh, a little bit different audience a little bit different audience an audience that maybe didn't really want to see me talking about Bath and Body Works. Maybe I could just, it just could be me being paranoid. Uh, I mean, it's a 
Starbucks is bad and worse than you. If, wait, wait, I want to read this one. If Shane was an SAT analogy, uh, would Dunkin' Donuts is to Starbucks as Bath and Body Works is to Yankee Candle? That, that's certainly, it's funny, Eric, that's certainly not true for me at all. That's certainly not true for me at all. In fact, Bath and Body Works and Yankee Candle would be to Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts as you know, a small coffee roaster. Somebody who is making phone calls all day, trying to get coffee brokers, bringing in raw green beans, selecting bean by bean, batch by batch, every single day, roasting their own beans to perfection, and then brewing it by hand, and then serving it. One person buying the beans, roasting the beans, serving that cup of coffee, that's gonna be equivalent to the small batch candle companies that I really want to tap into. It's about the people, the people behind the smaller companies, the passion that drives them. Because let me tell you, working in the coffee world, I'm not, I'm not sure of too many roasters who are making tremendous amount of money selling three and a half dollar uh, cups of coffee this big, but they do it out of passion. And they know there's people out there like me who appreciate the passion that they put into it. And I do want to mention this. I put out a, um, a mass message to all of the patrons uh, on the Patreon page, Candle Enthusiast page, about postcards. Uh, I really, really do apologize. This is one of the simplest tasks to send a postcard to somebody. But at first, we were dealing with like a few Patreon members, and now we have well, we have over 30 uh, patrons, and that's not a lot. But to collect everybody's shipping address was really difficult, and Patreon is not the easiest thing. Uh, well, wasn't the easiest thing for me to understand, but I've definitely got a system all worked out now. So uh, I'm upping my, my, my promise. I'm not gonna just send you one postcard. I'm gonna send you a postcard whenever I feel like it. You know, if the holiday comes around, I'll send you a postcard. Maybe I'll send you a Christmas card, who knows? So if you haven't received the postcard yet, don't hate me, don't think I'm trying to cheat you. It's only because I don't wanna just say thank you for supporting me, uh, Shane, the candle enthusiast. I wanna make sure that I'm addressing each and every one of you. Know who I'm writing to. I really want to personalize those cards. They are coming. Uh, Angie, she peels off. Are you talking about peeling off the labels of beer bottles? That's just, that's, uh, I do that too. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Votivo, another candle company I'm always talking about, has a tomato-themed candle that I'm very interested in trying since we're talking about the Body Works tomato vine. Christina says, I enjoy brand diversity in your reviews. I really appreciate that, Christina. I really do. And I hope, I really do hope to fulfill... Uh, how do I want to say that? I hope that I, I get a chance to do more really spread out, really spread out as far as the candle companies. And um, and like I said, a lot of things are changing now. A lot of things are in motion and it's all good stuff. Uh, so we're going to be seeing all the stuff that we enjoy. I'll always go back to like Bath and Body Works. If anyone really, really wants to see me review something, I'll do it absolutely any day. But uh, I'm really starting to reach out to the smaller companies and because we are growing as an audience collectively together these candle companies are like whoa these you know you know this you know not just the channel but these these very positive people who are watching these videos and are supporting these smaller companies like Witch City Wicks and stuff like that that was a huge move for us because and suddenly being turned down all the time you know people not responding to my emails.
people are like, yeah, yeah, I, I've seen some of your videos. I would love to send you some candles. So all those candles come to us and we get to explore all of these different outlets and companies. And that's only gonna become more and more, um, uh, it's, it's gonna happen at a, a more of a rapid pace. And hopefully we'll be able to travel to actually see these candle companies in the production of their candles as well. That's always been my mission for this channel, at least in part. Cecily says, Sean from Heart and Soul does a good Bath and Body Works reviews. Nance, or uh, Angie. Nancy, oh wait, wait, so that refers to something else. I will find it. Oh, 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 before we get too far, Cruise Bat, thank you for asking that question. Was Witch City Wicks happy with the response from us? Yes, it worked. Will it work better next year? Hopefully, yes. The bigger the audience gets, the more uh, the response will be. But I really think. I think last year when I initially met Liz, I you know had like 150 subscribers. I was telling her what I was doing. She's so confused because all my videos are Yankee Candle, and she's like, "Well, what do you want with me? All your videos are Yankee Candle. What's important about my small little company?" And I try to explain it to her, and she's one person who's always really had faith in what I was trying to do, and and just both one, in one year. Uh, what I felt like I've done with this channel, for me, it's, it's a big accomplishment. And what Liz has done with her company in just one year is a huge accomplishment. So I will always feel a special bond with Witch City Wicks, but we did a great job supporting them, supporting Liz and her art and uh, uh, her message when it comes to aromas. You have to keep in mind, too, they're running a store in Salem, so... Salem right now, if you don't know, is a madhouse. They're open every day of the week, which city weeks. There's tourists, tourists, tourists everywhere. So keeping anything in stock is, I don't, it's almost impossibility. I don't see how. In fact, they did permanently sell out for the season of Witch's Broom, which when I talked to Liz, she didn't see that happening. But that sold out a while ago. Their website is on hiatus right now. Well, I could see that. Rebecca remembers the first Witch City Wix video <sighs> filmed on a cell phone. The Ford family says, oh, look at this. Ford family says, Liz had nothing but nice things to say about you when we were there. She was so grateful. She is, she is such, uh, such a sweetheart, such a sweetheart and wealth of knowledge. And she's a living testament that, you know, if um, you just not happy with where you are and you really want to do something weird and people don't understand, people around you don't understand what your passion is, they don't connect with your passion, that she's a living testament that you can make it work. You know, I'm sure when she told people when she was first getting going i'm starting a candle company people were like what, what are you doing but now look at her all right we do have some mail to open some of it is already opened and um i just want to show you something real quick because this kind of blew my mind and she's with us today and we do have a giveaway a giveaway um winner to announce it's too late to submit now i think like five people submitted so this is what i'm talking about i gotta pay attention to these giveaways um cecily uh she's been if i'm not mistaken she's been a subscriber for a long time uh but i've noticed in the past like three weeks maybe a month uh uh, you know, she came back, she was starting to comment on the videos, and it was amazing because she was like not commenting on the new videos, she was commenting on all the past videos. And I'm like, wow, this is really cool. She's like checking out the back catalog of the candle enthusiast. And uh, as a joke, I thought she 
well, I didn't think it was a joke, but she said she was going to draw a picture of my expression when I first smelled the um, sugar cookie martini, the online exclusive for Yankee Candle 2017 Christmas. And look what she did. Whole, now, I apologize. I'm going to post this on Instagram um, because I know the resolution is probably not the greatest, but this is a hand-drawn... Uh, uh, portrait of me and my expression. You can see she captured all of the details perfectly. The crazy hair, the darkness under the eyes. Uh, and I'm putting it on the wrong side of the screen. I apologize. Uh, but look at that. Uh, that is intense. So if anyone ever says that uh, I, I can draw or I'm talented, uh, Cecily's definitely uh, gotten me beat. But just when you thought that was the end of it, this one really blew me away. This one really blew. She sent me something else. She sent me something else. And I apologize that I'm not op I didn't get a chance to open this live. Um, Cecily, I'll explain to you why I didn't open these live uh, uh, privately. But she painted a portrait. Again, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison on Instagram soon of uh, the real photographs and the, the portraits. Uh, acrylic on canvas, if I'm not mistaken, of Elsa. Look at that. That's her wearing her Halloween sweater, giving me that side stare, like, get this thing off of me. It's oil on canvas. I apologize. Um, very, I, I, honestly, I got chills when I saw this because she's nothing but a fluff ball. She's nothing but a fluff ball, and she... Instantly, I saw this and I knew uh, that that was her and captured her attitude completely. That's her attitude. That's Elsa right there. Uh, so huge, huge, heartwarming uh, shout out to Cecily for doing that. That is not a small thing for me. That really means a lot to me. And um, it definitely made my day. I got to share it with my friends and my family. They saw it. They loved it. And she sent wonderful uh, cards. A lot, all of your cards I have received. I'm not obviously going to read them, but your Halloween cards. Thank you for all of them. I want to thank everybody individually. But one thing I want to do for Cecily is, as I do want, I'm going to link her up in the description below because it looks like she does fine, uh, fine art portraits, original oil paintings on canvas. I should have read that oil paintings right there. Um, and, oh, there's the same card. Okay. Okay, so um, there's her card. I'm guessing that's her artwork. Look at that. Look at those things. I want to wrestle with those puppies. I want to wrestle with those puppies. Um, so definitely check Cecily out. I'm going to read, um, um, I guess, let me, her, uh, it's Cecily Urker. You can see her posting comments uh, at gmail.com if you want any, uh, uh, I guess, commission artwork or if you want any work done. Uh, or I'm sure she's got some um, some way for you to, to find out all about what she does and to see her portfolio and things like that. But I will link her up. And again, a huge, huge heartwarming, heartwarming. I, 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 I mean that. It really was a touching thing because that's not just like, you know, um, you know, uh, sending like a thank you card that was that was that was something very special to me that's something that i'll have for the rest of my life i mean i'll have all of your gifts for the rest of my life but that that elsa picture is going right next to her bed and i really really love it so thank you very much cecily it means the world to me and there's one more thing here Is Cookie, is Cookie Hill in the house? Cookie Hill. I'm so glad. It's so funny because a lot of you folks watch both the Candle Enthusiast and my brother, Eric Peter Carlson. So it's always interesting to see crossovers of viewers. And Cookie Hill is a, a viewer of uh, my brother. He, my brother's a Disney vlogger. I'm always saying it. The EPC family. And Monica's not here with us today. What's going on? 
for a second, I thought maybe it wasn't Sunday. So I'm not going to show you the box because I didn't get a chance to cross out the address. Uh, but we do have a box here. Uh, let's see what we have inside. I'm trying to keep up with the packages that come into uh, the P.O. box. I'm going to repeat what I always say. Always feel free to send me uh, anything fun, goodies, funny, as long as it's family friendly, anything you want. If it's a candle, I'll smell it. If it's a candy from like a different country, I'll try it. If it's a soda that's weird, I don't know if you can send liquids. But, you know, be creative, send stuff. All I ask is that you just don't spend a lot of money. Um, all right, I gotta back my chair up here because this is gonna make a mess. Peanuts, peanuts. What is in the box? Does anybody want to take a guess what's in the box? Rebecca, bye-bye, have a good one. Say hello to the family. There is, there's nothing in the box. There's a name, Amy, I'll say Amy. Um, anybody know what this is? Do we have, we have an Amy with us today, don't we? What's in the box? What's in the box? It looks like to, a candle. All right, I thought it was gonna be... So no, that's really well packaged. This is crazy. This is crazy. And the fact that Okay, okay, I know who sent this now. I know who sent this. Wow. Um, you guys want to, I, I would say a blast from the past, but I, I bet you a lot of you haven't even seen pictures, photographs of this, of this label on the internet. Oh my good God. I gotta smell it first, hold on. Wow. Um, if anyone wants to know about the shelf life of Yankee Candles, let me tell you, this is an oldie and it smells like it was made yesterday. Would you take a look at that? That is a very, I don't even know what year, that is a retro Witches Brew, medium size, 14.5 ounce house warmer jar. That label, I believe, was only released one year. Oh, good God. I don't, I, I don't, I know. I've never, I've never even seen one of these in person. And if you actually try to Google and try to get a good quality photo of this label. Oh, you can't get it. Uh, do you, okay, so Cecily, okay, I wanted to ask her if it was okay if I said it. So Cecily, wow, you're really stealing the show here, Cecily. <laughs> uh, Cecily sent this mysterious package of Witch's Brew, and that is, that is, that is amazing. That is, that will be a centerpiece in my collection um, does anybody know what year? Because this, oh man, I can't even venture a guess. I can't even venture a guess. Take a, one more last look at that. Look at that witch's brew. And it's, it's not lit. It's not lit. It's brand new. Oh, it smells wonderful. That. Let me tell you, that is what Halloween is all about. Remember Linus' speech? This is what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Well, this is Shane's speech. This is what Halloween is all about. The witch, the broom, the moon, the bats, the cat, the green cape, 
elegantly swaying in the wind. The sights, the sounds, the smells that I can derive from just looking at this portrait is astronomical. She's got a pumpkin. She's got a pumpkin on the end of her stick there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Does anybody else have one of these? Does anybody know what year? Because I don't have... The, the bottom doesn't have... This is before they started to do the pour dates. Long before they started to do the pour dates on the bottom of the candle. Uh, unless there was some other way of... 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 Uh, no, I mean, because there's a barcode and there's a four, four number code, which I'm guessing is, yeah, it's, okay, it's the item number. So item number 114128. Um, and that's not going to tell us anything about the year. I do believe that is uh, prior to 2001 as well. Thank you so much, man. That's huge. Wait till my brother sees that. You guys might not know that, but my brother is a big Yankee Candle fan. And why postpone this any longer? We had a very small um, contest, competition, whatever you want to call it. It was just for fun. Um, on Instagram that I, I announced last week, send a picture of... And post a picture on Instagram, something that just sums up Halloween in one photograph, kind of just like I mentioned here on this candle. Everything in this picture sums up Halloween for me. And a lot of you folks posted some stuff, all fantastic, some very funny. And, but I have to say, and this is funny, she, she's stealing the show. She's stealing the show. I said I was gonna do a lottery system, and there's just no need to because um, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, wow. It's an awesome picture. I'm gonna see if I can get at least a brief image. It's gonna be Cecily. Cecily's the winner of the giveaway. Now, it's not a, a massive giveaway, but I think it's pretty cool. You know, it's something that's in the budget of this show. Um, I can't navigate Instagram. Check out my Instagram account. Uh, it's it's going to be right here. Uh, IG. Just don't do it now. That's my Instagram handle. Um, uh, so if you look up, or if you hashtag, if you search the hashtag, um, the candle enthusiast, you'll see uh, Cecily's photograph. And uh, it's a beautiful portrait of front porch, uh, her black cat, that I'm forgetting the name, was it George? Uh, black cat, gourds and pumpkins, big, big vibrant orange, white, colors contrasting each other that wood stove in the background matching the pumpkin everything about that photo reminds me of halloween looking at that photo made me want to go up onto that porch knock on the door and say trick or treat so uh cecily i think because you are a, a patreon member i do have your shipping address so what i'll be doing is just as a reminder everything i got in this bag is coming to you i have all of the new uh, retail 2017 Yankee Candle tarts and votives. So eight pieces of wax in total. And I'll probably throw in some extras as well. You better believe I'm going to throw in some extras. And uh, this is going to be on your way. Not a huge prize. Not a huge prize. But I hope that puts a little light on your face for everything that uh, you just given me. Because you certainly brightened up my, my day and Halloween. Thank you. Thank you so much. Woo, man, this little show turned out to be a lot of stuff. Uh, yes, and uh, definitely, 
My candle is 1999. Like, I'm trying to make a joke. I was gonna make a Prince joke, but I won't go there. Uh, 1999. That's that's a that's amazing. Do you guys know what I was doing in 1999? I was in high school. Uh, fantastic. Let me look over everything. We've addressed Winter Wonderland collection. Awesome labels. I like them. I'm you know, I don't need to buy them because I still have mine. Very pretty labels. But I want Yankee Candle, I'm hoping Yankee Candle will one day start to address these changes that they make and how they make these changes. It's not a really hard thing to do. There's a wonderful thing called social media. You have a, a YouTube channel, Yankee Candle, uh, use it. Um, and you have an Instagram, you have a Facebook following, use it. Really reach out to the fans. That's, that's my suggestion. And I'm saying that with 100% love in my heart for the Yankee Candle company. Uh, shout out to uh, Scent Pop Candle Company for the Sally's Potion Collection. Shout out for Burke and Hare for all of their many candles. There's going to be more candles from Burke and Hare after the Halloween collection because they sent a bunch of stuff. Uh, Coventry Creations, which is purse. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you. I just, I just singed some nose hairs. That's what I just did. Don't, you think I'd know better. That is a good fragrance. That, I can't say which one's my favorite, but that's probably it, uh, of, that, of that Witch's Brew collection. And uh, other shout outs from, or to, certainly as Cecily for uh, really, uh, really making this show. And, uh, and that's really it, guys. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I may or may not do a live video on Halloween. There's more Halloween content coming, coming our way. Um, I wish I had it posted a lot sooner. Um, but I just want to thank everyone for, you know, uh, again, for, 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 for supporting and being, and, and being positive. You know, um, you know, I'm trying to do a lot with this channel, trying to do a lot, and sometimes I fall short. Sometimes I surprise myself and do pretty good, in my opinion. But sometimes I fall a little short, and I actually feel guilty, because I feel like I'm almost letting uh, you guys down at some, t at some, t at, at, at moments. But know that uh, this is, this, this candle enthusiast thing is a big, big, big part of my life. And I just really want to make sure that uh, you know that things are moving, things are progressing, uh, pr progressing, and as Lisa said, things are evolving, constantly changing, morphing, adapting to each new day. Spencer, Spencer, I'm guessing is the name of her cat. <laughs> Never feel let down. I think that's just a part of being an an artist. You know, it's just like a friend. One, my friend of mine just said to me, said, um, "So you really, really are working hard on this candle enthusiast project?" I'm like, "Yeah, I really am." And he's like, w w "When do you know? Like, when do you stop? Like, when when do you know like your work is done? If that doesn't happen, there's always things to be done." And when it's, the, you know, it's like when you're trying to produce content, but you're also trying to, you know, really push the envelope and make, 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 make this show something bigger than it already is. It's not always easy because, um, I don't want to, I don't want to lose followers. I don't want to turn off anyone. I want this show to grow organically. I'm always closing the show with these kinds of speeches. But something I always want to say, and I always stop myself, um, but since I just crossed 2,000 subscribers, we just crossed 2,000 subscribers, don't be creeped out when I say we, because I do include you guys in these things. Because I know a lot of you folks probably recommend my videos or share my videos 
on social media platforms. So you, you do have such a, a large part of the growth of this channel. But I would love, I would love, I would love to see this channel grow more. How is a YouTuber, how as a YouTuber am I supposed to address my audience, my subscribers and say, we need to get bigger, we need to get a bigger audience. That's not, it's like breaking the rules. But I, I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. This is not a popularity contest. This is not me trying to be Mr. Candle enthusiast and become like a celebrity in the candle world. I don't care about that. What I care about is having enough of an audience to pull off the things that I really, really want to do. So if anyone, 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 besides watching my videos, wants to contribute to anything, every now and then, say, hey, look, to your friends, to your family, your brothers, your sisters, your siblings, your parents, say, look, I watched this crazy guy He's got really bad hair issues that, you know, it's like he can't get it under control. Um, he's supposed to be looking into the camera, but he's always looking off to the side, which is really unprofessional. Uh, recommend the channel, recommend the videos, go back into the catalog um, of my older stuff um, and, and see some of the videos, especially the ones that are not just about candles, because these are the ones I really, really want to produce. I want to make almost documentary, uh, documentary structured videos. 10 minute evaluations of candles are great. That'll always be a part of the show, but I want to make, I want to do these travel shows where we can really sink our teeth into places, topics, history, art, really ask questions, meet people, talk to people, but it's very difficult with the size of the audience that we had. Now we're growing, 2,000, it's amazing. Once you hit that 2K, how many more emails are starting to be answered that I'm sending out? But if we can, if anyone could just get one, one subscriber, just one, just one person, we could double, double overnight. So if there's anything I could ever, ever ask as a favor, as a complete favor to you guys, it's just share the love share a video, call somebody up, say, hey, look, check out this video. I think you might enjoy it. And maybe, maybe hit subscribe in the process. For all of you folks who join me on these Smell It Sundays, I sometimes wonder <laughs> why, what, what it is about me that you guys keep coming back. I think it's the community that we've created here, which I think is the reason why this is so special and something I never really saw coming. I thought, how am I gonna keep these people entertained for uh, a half hour? And here we are at 90, 90 minutes. It's because we're a community and uh, for the, the, I would say 99.9% .9 of all of the conversations and comments are super positive here. And that's what's gonna separate us from a lot of other venues of not just YouTube, but internet and other candle forums or just any forums in general. So thank you everybody. Happy Halloween. From the bottom of my heart, it is the most special time of the year for me. Uh, just being able to be in this general vicinity of the world, which is where I grew up, uh, really just makes me feel like a child. And I hope that you can, that you're in a very similar situation, that you can tap back into the nostalgia or your childhood uh, for this Halloween season, and if not, if you're in a situation where you cannot recreate that feeling of being home or that those special feelings, I hope that you can reach it through the form of aroma. Candles can help us, aroma, transport ourselves back into time to bring those memories back, to help us lift those pieces up off the floor. Um, and I hope that you're using aroma, not just to make your house smell pretty, but to really enhance your life. Uh, and that's certainly uh, uh, what uh, all these candles do for me. Uh, weird, awkward sign out, I know, but maybe I'll see you guys Halloween night. If you guys got any ideas for me, things to do on Halloween night, list it in the comments below. This video will be posted uh, 
uh, in about 45 minutes officially. And make sure you fill up those comments areas. And if you haven't hit the thumbs up button, why not? Let's do it before we go, just in case, you know, if, if you like the video. If you didn't like the video, don't, don't do it. But uh, I will be seeing you guys next week. Um, we're switching gears next week. So Halloween, another Halloween will have come and gone by next week. So we're switching gears. And like I said, things are changing, things are evolving. I think you guys will be excited what's, uh, what's, what lies ahead, so to speak. So for now, have a lovely Sunday. Go get yourself a nice warm beverage, light up a candle, put on the It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown, and have a happy, happy Halloween. I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks again. Bye-bye.